That is a really nice oyster. That's like perfect. Thick, wide, it's just a perfect oyster. In the town of Wellfleet on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, the oyster is everywhere. And for good reason. The taste and texture of the Wellfleet oyster has made it famous around the world. Shell fisherman William Chopper Young has been harvesting oysters in Wellfleet since the mid-1980s. He's also a world champion oyster shucker. He says the secret to what makes Wellfleet oysters so great lies here, in the waters of Wellfleet Bay. The marshes, the tributaries that to feed the whole harbor, you know. It's the perfect solidity. Uh, they just thrive in that, they love that, and it gives them the real flavor that the Wellfleet's known for, you know, the awesome oyster flavor. Wellfleet Bay's other asset is the wide range of its tides, which can change by 10 feet within a matter of hours. Twice a day, this powerful tide comes in, mixing the water in the bay and bringing in fresh nutrients. Wellfleet shell fishermen have oyster cultivation down to a science. They handpick wild oysters from shorebeds and dredge them from the bay floor. They also grow oysters on the roughly 130 acres of aquaculture farms that line the bay. But although oysters are plentiful in Wellfleet, there's a major part of the oyster's habitat that's missing, the reef. In their natural state, Oysters fuse together, they cement one to the other, and actually form a matrix structure which is quite solid. These reef structures, which can grow to be six feet deep or more, play a crucial role in the marine ecosystem. Oysters filter huge amounts of water just by eating. An oyster that is at about legal size, so around three inches, is probably filtering 20, 25 gallons a day. It's a, it's a substantial amount. Um, particularly when you consider that on a healthy reef there are millions of oysters. As an oyster eats, it strains the phytoplankton and algae from the surrounding water. This helps to maintain a healthy balance of microscopic plants and prevents the formation of harmful algal blooms. Oyster reef also creates habitats for many different species of fish, crabs, and other organisms that grow on and around it. A hardy reef can also fortify a shore protecting it from erosion. As soon as the wave energy gets broken up and the water isn't moving as much anymore, the sediment drops out, so the area behind the oyster reef gets filled in. When the first colonists settled in Wellfleet in the 1640s, they found oyster reefs towering six to eight feet high around the bay. Legend has it that the settlers actually had to blast through the reefs to clear a channel for boats so that they could enter what is now Wellfleet Harbor. The colonists quickly identified the oyster as a valuable resource. It was an excellent source of protein, and the shells could be broken up and used to fertilize soil and pave roads. But as the town grew, the reefs shrunk, victims of development and over-harvesting. By the late 1800s, the natural reefs were gone. Oyster reefs around the world have met with similar fates. Only a few patches of natural reef remain, like this one in Rhode Island. We've lost actually about 85% of the oysters globally. By comparison, the globe has lost about 20% of coral reef um, and about 50% of mangrove and seagrass area. So um, it was a bit of a surprise to us that uh, the oyster reef is actually much worse off than that. To marine ecologists, reefs are a crucial part of the environment, but to fishermen, reefs are a dead weight. Oysters, when they grow naturally on a reef, tend to be long and thin and grow vertically. Um, so they are a very different shape to the oyster that people would like on a dinner plate. The oysters we like to eat are those that are cultivated to be round and thick. This puts pressure on fishermen to produce oysters like these. Each year, Wellfleet shell fishermen produce about 850,000 oysters that are sold to markets worldwide. Because the shape of reef oysters is unappealing to customers, fishermen deliberately break apart clumps of oysters so that they will grow separately. This prevents reefs from forming. Kind of rough. That's what you got to do. 
the more you break them, the better it is for them. You get all singles. And those will fatten out, widen out, start growing sideways instead of length. Well, even that one is like totally unmarketable. So how do we grow reefs without threatening fishermen's livelihood? Wellfleet has become the test bed for solving this dilemma. Wildlife Sanctuary Director Bob Prescott is leading an effort to rebuild Wellfleet Harbor's natural reefs. His goal is not just to grow oysters, but to revitalize the local ecosystem. People wonder, well, why don't we have as many striped bass? Why don't we have as many flounders? Why don't we have as many uh, quahogs? And it's all because of the, the, the loss of biodiversity, the loss of habitat. The first step is to build a structure that will catch the millions of baby oysters that appear in the bay each summer. So you can see the three treatments sort of laid out in this experimental plot. Each one contains shell or culch, uh, spat blocks, which are sort of square cement blocks, and then the reef balls, sort of the roundish looking ones are, are reef balls. The restoration has faced challenges. In its first season, roughly half of its baby oysters didn't survive Wellfleet's bitter winter temperatures. We thought that was terrible, and all the growers thought that was pretty good to only lose 50%. They lose as much as 80% of their baby oysters in the first year. Another hurdle has been finding a structure tough enough to endure the site's powerful sand drifts and the bay's brutal annual assault of winter sea ice. With the project now entering its fourth season, Prescott is already seeing sea life returning to the flats. The diversity of crabs is just spectacular. And so when the tide comes in, and this is completely flooded, in come the fish, and they feed around these reef structures. Wellfleet's project is one of many supported by the Nature Conservancy and the federal government, which are working to restore oyster reefs along both U.S. coastlines. By regrowing reefs, project leaders hope to offer a natural solution to pollution, erosion, and biodiversity loss. But Wellfleet's project is unique because it's tackling the fishing question head on. The sanctuary is working closely with the town to find a way for harvesting and habitat to coexist. The Oyster Project, it's, it's been viewed as a positive thing by pretty much everybody. If anything, it'll create more broodstock. So we're going to have more oysters reproducing out there. But commercial fishing may still challenge the project. According to Massachusetts law, any citizen with a fishing license can harvest legal-sized oysters from a naturally growing reef, even one that's part of a restoration project. In three years, if the sanctuary's reef survives, it will be open for fishing. Natural fishing and, and harvesting of oyster reefs is going to be um, uh, the biggest challenge. As you see, we've lost oyster reef habitat you know, before in Wellfleet Harbor. If we don't manage it right, um, then we will lose it again. To keep this from happening, project scientists have struck an agreement with fishermen and town officials. They plan to experiment with different levels of harvesting across the reef. On one section, 60% of the oysters will be fished, on another, 30%, and a third section will remain untouched. The goal is to determine how many oysters can be taken without destroying the reef. What we've demonstrated through history is that we're not actually very good at picking that point. And we're certainly not very good at picking that point with oysters. The Wellfleet Restoration Team hopes to be the one that finds that perfect point. If it does, it may change the way we balance conservation and consumption. But Prescott says managing fishing rates may not be enough. Why can't we set aside 10 acres, 20 acres, 50 acres, a bottom in different parts of the harbor that we allow oysters to live and not be harvested? This is the dilemma conservationists face. They must fight to save habitat without compromising our resources. Will the reef's environmental benefits be worth more than putting the perfect oyster on a plate? This oyster town may provide the answer.